myself back. Another one here in my garage. Some of you might have been wondering, well, where has the Impala been? You've seen it in the back ground videos, whatnot. Got a couple messages on it. No, nope, not really. It's, it's sitting here. As you can see, it's torn apart. Why is it torn apart? Well, I'll start it with the coolant leak. Coolant leak, not where you think, not what we had on Power Tour with the radiator. So I went through, popped the radiator out. Turns out it was a uh, faulty one. And yeah, got it exchanged. Cold case came through. It was really nice. But I had all those other little odds and ends that I've been meaning to get fixed. The oil leak. What else did we have to fix? Oh, yeah, the little temp sensor thing that was in the front that we put in there on Power Tour. And today's video, heater core. Now, that's coming in a future video. But anyways, today's video, got a new heater core. Of course, I went on Amazon or eBay. I don't remember. Filtered it by the cheapest one that I could possibly find. And here it is. Took very long to get it. But <laughs> it's cheap. I don't care. So with that, today's video, as you guessed, we're going to install a heater core in a B-body. I've never done one. Let's, let's figure it out. If you've never installed any kind of a heater core in anything before, chances are you're in for a treat. Some cars are easy, some cars are not. I'm gathering that this one is going to be okay-ish, I guess. We're going to have to rip the dash apart. For sure. How far? I don't know. I used to, once upon a time, have a 1987 Ford Thunderbird that ended up having a uh, heater core leak. And in order to replace the heater core, the whole dash had to come apart. So I just looped it. And never drove it in the winter anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But anyways, I guess it all depends on what car you got, how hard it's going to be. And this one, I think it's not going to be too difficult. But... If you've never done it, locate the heater core lines. They are these two pipey, smaller, three-eighths, half-inch. I don't know what size you got. Look for them. They usually run up, and then they go to the firewall. Right back in there. Can you see it? Right back in there. Right back in there. That'll give you a good indication on where the heater core is inside the car, because most likely it's plumbed in through there. Now let me break it down for you a little simpler if you need to know about heater cores. Really quick over here on Burt, we got, it's nothing new. So what happens is coolant comes from the block hot, plums through one line into the heater core, heats up the heater core, pushes it out to the other side and into a return. This return happens to be into the radiator, some are into the water pump, some are back into the block, they're all relatively the same. Usually also, you have one side of the heater core, it's got a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller. That's for restrictions, so you can heat up the heater core. Because what happens is it's like a mini radiator. And then you get your blower motor in there, <laughs> blows air over this, and that's where you get your heat, and blows through your vents. Pretty simple. And on Power Tour, the Impalas just so happen to... my coolant and then we had to do the water pump and then it was that whole fiasco so they're pretty important pretty good sealed system yeah so let's dive into getting into this one on a b-body first you're going to want a flathead phillips screwdriver 
Next, you're going to want a half inch or quarter inch socket. A couple random extensions, big one if you need be. For the sockets on the quarter inch, you're going to want seven. You're going to want, what is it, focus, 5.5. You're also going to possibly want quarter inch, quarter inch, and you're also going to want 10 mil. And besides that 10 mil, you're going to want it on a deep well. If you got a deep well on your quarter inch, cool. I just got one on my three eighths, so it's there. You're going to need a uh, blade, whatever one works for you. For wrenches, you're going to need 10 mil. Box end. I just use the because uh, it comes in handier. You're going to need a 5.5 millimeter combination wrench. And then also quarter inch box end wrench. Most dashes, you're going to be able to get away with just those simple, basic tools. You might need a flathead prying off some clips or something like that, but... That's it. So we're going to dive into it with our stuff. So in the passenger seat here, we got to access this. You got like four or five underneath here for this guy. And then you got like a little weird plastic thingy down here. You're probably going to have to pull that out too. Something like that. It kind of just... You know, pulls out. And then, might be time to clean that stuff up or else. Anyways, then we're going to have to just keep digging into it as far as we can. I do believe we should be able to get to it with just pulling this off. I'm going to pull that off right now. Make me a liar. It was only three. that's out there's the hinge hmm. now what do you gotta do i don't know i'm looking stop yelling at me oh, that's why i got a vacuum leak So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at a uh, air conditioner box. And I'm guessing we got to get in there to get to our heater core. I'm guessing all those HVAC vacuum lines where you hear the when you move that thing over there need to come off. So we'll just have to move all those out of the way. And then we got those seven millimeter those guys right there, probably, I'm guessing, all along the box here to get them off. One back in there. Yep, there we go. Any up in there. Don't see any. A couple over there. A couple over there. Yeah, that looks like we're going to have to undo that support as well. Yeah, so that's where your 10 mils are going to come in. And by that one, it looks like we need a deep well. Well, grab yourself a deep well. So using that 5.5, go ahead and remove all of the Majigger hardware doodabbers, you know, those screws. You can do it one-handed without tangling up your light. Get all those pulled out all the way around the box and then the box will drop down. So for the one that's way back up in here, I had to get my 5.5 M&M wrench, slowly take it off. So there's that. Now I got to dig out the one that's up in here. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. Where'd you go? Somewhere up in there. Well, we got to dig out that one. That one's going to be fun. So for this back one, I got my 
adapter Rooney that I use for my socket, or not my socket, my drill, on there with five point five socket to get on that back one. I'm gonna take my quarter inch wrench and actually get on there and turn it because that's about the only way I can think to get that one out of there. Hopefully it doesn't go down far enough where it bottoms out, but I'll be working at this for a minute. So now that you fight to get all these nuts and bolts and stuff out, you don't wanna go ahead and get in here, pry this down, work it out, and you should be able to pull this bottom cover off. I might have to bend and pry and get it all off and break the seal and whatnot, but, and there's our heater core. Okay, looking underneath here, now that I got that off, you got two uh, majiggers that look like heater cores under here. This one over here, that's for your condenser. That's what blows all your cold air, your Freon and stuff runs through that. So that's the condenser. The heater core obviously is over here. We're gonna have these little straps that hook it on. Probably's got a couple, I don't know. They're probably up over here. Yeah, right up over here. Pull those down. We'll be able to pull it down. Looks like we got some other apparatuses on this side to deal with as well. But there it is, there's a the heater core. Before we get too far into this, we're gonna go to the firewall in the front and we're gonna remove the hose in there. And that should be those awesome GM clampers, majiggers, doodabbers, fingers back in there. So we're gonna we'll go ahead and get those off right now and then we'll move on to the next step. So a little thing I like to do while removing any kind of hose that's been hermetically sealed onto something for quite some time. Kind of like the uh, water pump here. Obviously remove your clamp. Once you get your clamp slid back or off, you want to take a razor blade and just kind of put a slice in it. Not big, just a little slice in it. That way what happens is you can you can rip it off and pull it off because you loosen it up because it's clamped on there. It's not going anywhere, but when it's clamped on there, you got you to gotta make it so it does go somewhere. So that little slice in there with the razor blade, that will relieve your pressure if you will off your hose and you'll be able to pop it off so i got the top one as you can see i don't know if you can see it in there i got my clamp removed so i'm gonna slice it pull it off do the same to the bottom and be good i am gonna reuse those hoses though so stick around for how i'm gonna do that so they are now removed also there's a little bracket underneath the uh, windshield washer motor here got one little seven mil some insulated but we got that off so now what we're going to end up doing is we're going to clean this up so we can reuse it as i mentioned we put those slices in there so we can pop it off well i'm just going to trim it off here on both of them and we're going to be able to reuse these furthermore we're going to have to address that end and thankfully, I got some, some couplings. A couple of reasons why I'm gonna reuse this and that other hose that's on there. Well, because I'm cheap. And this hose apparatus thing was about a hundred bucks. And these fittings were about seven. So why not, why not just spend $7 and use what's there and not and then clean it up and then it works right right and i'm probably going to regret this and have a massive coolant leak but that's what we're going to do so for the ends there i went to where uh the mark ended from where i was gashing it and i just whoosh, cut it flush did with both of them called that good the other side where we're going to plumb in the original line I crammed in the uh, one inch brass couplings. Make sure you use brass. Probably a little overkill on this uh, 3 8 line, but should be good on this. This is half inch line, inch line. I don't know. This bigger one, it'll be fine. A little lube, put her in there, slid her right in. So that's what I'm going to use to patch up. And yeah, should get me through. So our old loop 
course we had these 90s in here and they had some really good teeth and whatever else but that held tucked away I don't see any reason why that's not gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna do is just pop that pop this one off and pop that one off and we're just gonna plumb it in as it was never cut okay connected those I actually just added a uh, the piece that was on the bottom to that little black part right in there because I forgot that there was a different piece from the original had to do a new chunk from here to there this one was a little short but I'll hang on to that here for future use now we got to remove the heater core move on we'll say when you reinstall those lines though get yourself some of this lubrication right here to jam it in get your mind out of the gutter so as we climb underneath we got the heater core right here what you're gonna have is this little bracket right here that kind of holds something like that onto there and it goes up to the box over here and they got another one up over here that loosens up and then it falls down and then you get it you get it loose and then you just you know, wiggle, wiggle wiggle it out you may need to get in there finagle the uh i don't know what they're called hose aluminum hose parts you may need to finagle them a little bit because they do bend but i'm gonna work on this and that heater core will be out good yank and it's out make sure that seal is uh good to go if you gotta clean it now would be a good time to clean it and whatnot so it's a comparison got them out we're gonna have this little bracket that we'll have to put on this one these do rotate so don't be worried maybe yeah. rotate out we get them to match up call it good the old one doesn't appear to be terrible but i can feel it where you can see it a little bit but i can feel it where it's sticky dried up coolant so we're gonna flip those around put that new one in i'm moist i'm dry i'm moist i'm dry i'm moist and why is that because it's moisting out because it's moisting outside all right so now we're gonna put this thing back we got it all bolted up we're gonna put this guy back on make sure this little drainer plugger is nice and clear we don't have any gunk in there because that's what drains off for our condensation for ac and if our you know you know our thing is draining and leaking like it was so let's do that let's throw it back on and we'll put this thing back together okay drip pans back on did left some hardware out so now we gotta put this little brace guy doodabber back on with this long giant yeah in here and then under here and then we're done almost with the interior and it's putting the glove box back on well and with that i got my hoses re-hooked up to the heater core i got my hanger put back in there hose is nice and tight Nothing's really hanging up on headers and everything when I get to that point. We're good. So with that, it's going to wrap this one up. Heater core install. 1995 Chevrolet Impala. 94, 96. Same thing. Caprice, Roadmaster, Fleetwood. They're all the same. Put one in if you need it. You'll thank yourself. Thanks everyone for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment below. More coming on the Impala very soon. See you in the next one.